So today we're going to be looking at developing your very first VR game or application using Unity for the Oculus Quest 1 or 2. This tutorial works on either a Mac or a Windows machine. If you've got Windows you can use Oculus Link and if you're on a Mac we can deploy straight to the Oculus Quest device. So by the end of this tutorial you're going to be standing in your very first world that you've created. You're going to be able to move around, see everything in your environment and be ready to springboard onto whatever you want to do next. Okay, let's get started. So go to the Unity website to download Unity if you haven't done so already. Pick the plan that suits you. In this case, we're going to pick personal, it's free. It's going to require you to set up an account. Go ahead and do that. And once you've done that, you can actually download the Unity Hub. Now the Unity Hub is a piece of software that allows you to control all the different ver versions of Unity that you're going to install. Okay, Unity Hub is installed, so now we want to actually install the version of Unity that we want. Here we're going with 2020.3, the latest version, and we got to make sure that we've got Android um, included in the support so that we can deploy to the Oculus Quest, either on the Mac or the PC. All going well, it will start to install. Then we want to go to the project setting on the left hand side, click new. We also want to make sure we're using the 2020 or the most recent version that we want to use here. Um, so we're going to give our project a name. So in this case, getting started, VR Unity 2020. And the other thing we want to make sure is that we're using the 3D template. You can use other templates for VR, but in this case, we're going to keep it simple and use the 3D template. Okay, excellent. So now we've got Unity installed. We're going to want to install our XR plugins to get ourselves up and running. So you go to the edit menu, go to project settings, you'll find XR plugin management and install XR plugin management. Okay, so once XR plugin management is installed, we want to click on Oculus, the plugin provider there, so it will download it. We also want to make sure that we've this setting enabled for both desktop and Android because we're going to be deploying to the Oculus Quest on Android as well as using Oculus Link on the desktop. We also want to make sure that our platform is set to Android so we can deploy to Quest. So go to build settings, Android, and then switch platform. Okay, so once that's built, we want to go to player settings and make sure that we have the right setting for our API level for Android. So currently we're working off Marshmallow, so let's make sure that's set to level 23. Perfect. Okay, so now we want to install our packages. Go to our package manager, go to Unity Registry, so we can see everything in the cloud, advanced project settings, and enable preview packages. This is important so that we can see the packages that we need to be able to download, some of which are still in preview before they get moved to LTS or long-term support. Okay, so once preview packages in, is enabled, we should be able to see all, all of those in our Unity registry. Type in XOR, we'll see that we've got XOR plugin management installed, and next up we want the XOR interaction toolkit. Click install. So it's worth taking a second just to introduce the XR Interaction Toolkit. So this has come about in the last year or so. It's still in preview, but moving towards long-term support. This is Unity's new way for XR, which is basically VR or AR developers, to interact with the Unity input system. So instead of having to write all the interactions yourself, Unity is giving you for free most of these built in. And the cool thing is, once you learn them in one place, they'll work across many different systems. Okay, back to Unity. So the XR Interaction Toolkit uses a new input API and we're going to get a warning basically asking us to make sure that we want to set up the uh, legacy input system so that both are connected. So click yes. And that's going to reboot our instance of Unity. So give it a couple of seconds. Okay, great, we're back in. And if we look at our package manager, we can see that the XR Interaction Toolkit's installed. We also want to import the default input actions, so import those, and you'll see they arrive in your assets folder. So these default input actions are important for us to be able to map the new input system to our XR Interaction Toolkit plugins. 
So here I've opened up the default input action samples from earlier, and then I'm adding each one Okay, so next up we want to go to edit, project settings, and we go to preset manager. We just want to make sure we have the right filters set to map to the right and the left on our action based controller. Okay, so before we jump into VR, we want to be able to interact with a pretty cool environment. So we're going to go to the Unity Asset Store and search for a Polygon Starter Kit and the polygon starter pack here from Synthi, I highly recommend it's free it's only a couple of megabytes to download I've already downloaded it previously so if I open my package manager here and I set my packages to um, my assets you'll be able to see our polygon starter pack is there so we can import it to the project Okay, so now we've got our asset pack downloaded, our Polygon Starter Kit. Let's go to Scenes, Demo, and we're going to op open the demo that has already been provided for us. It's going to save us some time instead of importing all the prefabs and creating something from scratch. Okay, great. So now we've got the scene open and ready. Let's switch over to Scene View, and we want to find a good place to place our XR rig. And the XR rig essentially represents the V or user or a player within the environment. So we go to XR, go for action based XR rig as opposed to the old device based. And then let's place it here beside our car. Okay, great. So let's click on the XR rig in the hierarchy. And let's take a look at one of our controllers and see that all the actions have already been copied as references from our samples step we did earlier on. What we also need is a new component called an input interaction manager. So this needs to be assigned to each rig. And within that rig as well, we want to add a new element and then add in the XRI default input actions. They're also come from our samples. So if you open the, um, the samples folder, you'll, you'll have seen that that was in there as well from an earlier stage. Okay, so we're almost there. The next thing we want to add is a locomotion system. So this will allow you to move around the environment instead of just being in one static place. And what we're also going to do is instead of using the teleportation um, provider, we're actually going to use a continuous move system. So that means you can use your thumbstick on your controller to actually move around the environment rather than using teleportation, which just makes it a little bit easier for the purpose of this tutorial. But we can touch on that at a later stage. So add your continuous move provider here on the right hand side. And then we want to make sure that we've got the a locomotion system um, attached to that continuous provider. And then we just want to make sure that we're using the right reference on the left and right controllers. So you can just click these toggle boxes off to make sure you're not using both on both hands. If you're on a Windows machine, you can take advantage of the Oculus app and the Oculus link and test and develop using the play button directly to your Oculus Quest without having to package it. But we'll also show you how to package it directly to your device if you're on a Mac. You can buy the link on Amazon or directly from the Oculus website, and you can also buy cheaper versions like this one, which works fine for me. Okay, so plug in your link, make sure it's enabled on your Oculus Quest. Okay, this is the exciting bit. So press play, make sure your Oculus Quest is on. And hopefully this is what you're going to see. So you should be able to see your controller show up, you should be able to move your head, be able to move forward and backward using the joystick and also use your snap turn. Awesome. So congratulations on getting this far. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe to encourage me making more free content like this. 
if you don't see the screen and you've got some issues don't worry I've got some troubleshooting tips coming up and please add any comment with any problems that you're having and I'll do my very best to see if I can help so maybe you don't have an oculus link you're working on a Mac and you want to deploy directly to your quest or maybe you just want to put it on your quest so you can show your friends if you're on Windows um, connect your regular charging cable from the oculus quest to your PC or your Mac then you refresh your settings to make sure that you can select it and make sure it's set to Android from our previous setup earlier in the tutorial and then we can build and run. It will ask you to save or create a file name for your APK so just put in whatever you want there. So I've cut past the build process but usually that takes a couple of minutes to compile and that's a real advantage of using the Oculus Link and a Windows machine over, over a Mac for quest development you can really see what you're working on a lot faster directly through the link without having to deploy a package every single time so when the build is finished and assuming you've hit build and run instead of build you should actually see your demo environment appear in the oculus quest straight away if you don't see it straight away you can still run it from your unknown sources in the applications menu so in your oculus home go to your apps then the drop down all the way to the bottom click on unknown sources and there you should see your app all you need to do is click on it and it will start awesome so now you're free to disconnect your charging cable or your link and you can take it to show your friends anywhere you want without needing a PC attached so hopefully you found this helpful. Thank you so much for following along. Um, if you want more content like this related to XR, VR and AR development, please like and subscribe. And I'm hoping to make a lot more videos around this topic. Thanks so much.